So I can't talk nearly as loud as Mr. Binky, and I don't have a wizard's tongue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't talk about the expansion. <laughs> So, here's the expansion, and we're all really tired and jet-lagged, so we have some notes, too, if we forget, and you can call us on it as well. I'm not tired. How many of you are playing the expansion? Are, are any beta. of you in the beta? So, a lot of this will be new to some of you. Great. We have uh, the elves. <laughs> And the expansion comes with new combat abilities, new architecture, new housing tiles. Uh, some of you may have seen those, some pictures of them already. New trainable mounts in addition to the Charger of the Fallen. Right. <laughs> Once you actually have to train. <laughs> Hundreds of new craftables, including recipe scrolls, which are pretty cool. New wearables, a new city, and more. And we're going to have a demo, so we'll show you a little bit of this today. You can start a new elf character, or you can take one of your veteran characters and transform them into an elf. We wanted to have uh, give you a little bit of something different, and normally with the expansions, you have to start a brand new character. We wanted to give you a chance to use one of your one of your characters that you use all the time to become an elf, if you wish. What? And we have twisted new enemies. I'm sorry, did that go too fast there? <laughs> huh? No, that's right. That's you're fine. Okay. We have Chief Paroximus, who's a hideous disease spewing walking pollution, and you'll be seeing him. <laughs> no, and it's not Pinky. <laughs> oh, that's mean. I did put those for multiple hours for that model, so you better enjoy it. We have the Dread Unicorn, a really nasty unicorn, a noxious, twisted version of a once pure creature, and you can kill him and get fat loot. Lady Millicent. <laughs> Lady Millicent so foul, the mere sight of her causes humans to wretch. And you can get good loot. Uh, a shimmering effusion, a deadly light that appears when greed and evil and corruption are in the area. And lots of other new champion spawns, peerless monsters, lots of really nasty things to go and fight. New dungeons. Well, we're going to take questions as soon as we're done with this. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's right. That's the evil greed. That's us. Yeah, it's their their energy creatures. <laughs> we have nine new dungeons. Many of these are also mirrored on Feluca. So if you're red, how many of you are are like to PvP and play Feluca? You'll be able to. You'll be able to. Um, go to many of these dungeons. You might get killed in them, but you might, you'll be able to go to many new dungeons. You get new treasures, new champion spawns, new paragon creatures, and new paragon artifact, minor artifacts that come off them. Um, new peerless monsters that are literally, they really are, the toughest monsters we've ever had in UO. We have the new spell weaving skill. This is instead of a whole profession, it's just one skill. And the difference with this skill compared to other skills is the more people you have working with you, the more powerful the spells become. So it's pretty neat. Um, some of the spells are Gift of Renewal, uh, Attune Weapon, Nature's Fury. There's a bunch of different ones. The new quest system. You can do quests to get new runics, get new uh, crafting recipes, new, you have escort quests, you have quests to kill things. There's a whole new quest system coming in, which is a really nice addition to the game. Collections. There's several new community collections that use existing land areas to have everyone come together. So you can work as a group, and you can also work for yourself and get really nice rewards from it. There's Binky. Increased housing capacity. You get 20% more housing capacity now, and that includes vendors. So you'll be able to have 20% more vendors for those of you that run public houses. But wait, what's in it for me? Well, we have Mr. Binky to talk about that. Hello? Oh, there it is. So what's in it for me? This is normal. 
normally where the marketing guy comes in and does lots of cool marketing words like fabulous and extraordinary and fantastic and money saving and you know, blah 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 good stuff so I, I'm not quite as smooth and suave as he is so I'm just going to read yeah, yeah. what's in it for me I love adventuring and killing monsters I should not speak so loudly I'm sorry so what, what do you do you kill new monsters we have a lot of new monsters to kill tons and tons and tons and on the website we put up a few of them I think I put up about ten and they're Quite a few more of, uh, that'll be going up next week. We have nine new dungeons to explore of all different types. And the designers have really gone outside of the standard <coughs> inside a cave, follow the little curvy walls, uh, design philosophy, and kind of design the dungeons to be more open areas. Like So they're more, I wouldn't call them dungeons, I would call them adventure areas rather than dungeons. They're really cool, add a lot more element of strategy and gameplay. We have new monster AI. The, the monsters... They're smart and mean, and a lot of the feedback we received from the beta is that they're a little too smart and a little too mean. So I think that's good because people complain, oh, I can kill every monster all day long, 100 times a day. Well, now you're getting your ass kicked. Arse kicked, sorry. Um, <laughs> new paragons, paragon-like creatures, chance the new peerless creatures, which have also we've been getting lots of complaints from people in PvP saying, oh, the peerless are too hard. I can't kill them. And we actually have one of the peerless in the game which has not been killed yet in the beta. Yeah, it still has not been killed. So I'm, I'm fighting for them not to tweak him. I want him to just whoop everyone. New modern artifacts, new quest system, making hunting more and worthwhile. The quest system is really cool. The quest system is really cool. As you walk by, the little NPCs will bark out at you and say, oh, help me, help me, I need help. And you go and you talk to them and they'll say, I need you to help me do X. And you go do X and come back and they'll give you all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. 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 I heard that last night when I was walking. No. No. I like PvP. There's lots of people who PvP and say that, you know, PvP, uh, you know, it's broken. It's rubbish. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That was the evil biz of Binky. Um, so both races have useful PvP benefits. Humans have increased hit point regeneration, which is really awesome, and elves have increased energy resistance and increased maximum mana, which is really, really cool, and has added a lot of strategy to PvP. Um, the new talismans and uh, uh, crafted food items add tactical options. They give you lots of cool advantages and, um, and, and st- more strategic elements to the game to really help you PvP. And I don't like the way you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rewards are better in Feluca, and hopefully that'll draw some more people over to Feluca to check it out to play. So here, you know, there aren't enough people in Feluca. Feluca's kind of dead. Um, d- just delete it? Is that, is that where you play? Oh, okay. Then never mind. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so hopefully, you know, that'll help up and PvP will get increased. We'll have more people over there to kill or be killed by. Ah, good times. What if I'm a crafter? What if I'm a crafter, you may be asking? Well, we have new craftable quality, artifact quality items. Um, you can craft really cool things, really powerful things. Really neat, rare, unique things until, you know, that's a good question. If you're the first person to craft it and you've only, you're the only one who's crafted it for three weeks, during that three-week time. Uh, new runic kits for fletching and carpentry. New rare recipe scrolls earned through crafting quests that grant the ability to create special items. And that's really cool. That goes back to tying the quest system into uh, the crafting abilities. So that way, you know, the crafters aren't left out in the cold. They actually can go do quests that don't involve going down to the depths of the dungeon to see, to, you know, getting owned. So and then we have new resources to gather. Um, enhancements to lumberjacking and mining. New types of wood. Um, uh, the Amber, the, mining, the, and the, yeah, and the uh, arrow quivers, 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 and you can have different types of quivers that give your arrows different abilities and that kind of stuff. So like poison arrows, and the crafters are essential in crafting consumable items required to access several new dungeons. So you actually need the crafters to build you stuff in order to get into the new dungeons. So they'll pay, play a pivotal role in the game. So that's really good. But wait, what's in it for me? 
I like building and designing homes. Obviously, we've added lots of new elven home tile sets, which are very earthy and like tree-like and natural vines. Really cool stuff. You can do some really neat things with those. We've added new elvish uh, furnishings, uh, furniture and that type of stuff, which look really good. Some of the highest quality stuff we've seen as far as the home decor stuff. New trophies to collect and display. The new aquarium system you can put in your house. You get an aquarium, use special nets to go out and catch things, put them in your house, and you grow them. Kind of like the plant system. What's that? No. I thought you said you want a cracker in your house. I was like, well, when you get the parrot, you can have crackers to feed them. Yeah, yeah, so the aquarium system is really cool. You can raise and grow fish and breed things, and they give you items. They give you rewards. They cause events. They live. They grow. They die. It's sad. You grow attached. You lose them. you got to be a good parent. And then the new talking parrots. You can put the parrots in the house, name them whatever you want, and as you type things, they learn over time. They learn to say things that you say. So if you're naughty and type lots of bad things in your house, or... Yes, because your parrot only says what you say. So, yeah, I'm sorry. So, yeah, the new parrots are pretty cool. You'll see that in the demo. You'll see all, most all of this in the demo coming up in a little bit. Um, do we have another slide, Mr. Shepard? Lounging in his chair? Sorry. I like to solo. I like to play alone because I don't know how to talk to people and I don't have friends. <laughs> that's, that's me. It's basically me. I, 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 you know, I don't like talking to people in the real world. Uh, we have new quests, right? Hundreds of new goals, and that's, you know, part of the quest system that we talked about earlier, which is really cool. New dungeons and monsters available for those who love exploring and fighting. You can go out, fight, tame, have lots of cool things, new mounts. Uh, the new crafting improvements that we talked about earlier are really cool for the solar who can, you know, then put them on his vendor to sell and do that kind of stuff. So he doesn't have to talk to human. Um, community collections give the solo character a way to work towards common goal and gain, gain great rewards. So we have a couple of things like the library and the zoo to where people work together to repopulate these things and cause events in the game. And it's really cool. But it, it's soloing, but working together. So you don't have to work with someone, but if you go out and capture X animal, creature, whatever, and put it in the zoo, you've contributed without interacting with others directly. So that's pretty neat. And then I like collecting things. We have all new armor sets, and you collect all the pieces, which give you cool, cool um, bonuses. Um, the new aquarium talked about earlier, you take and grow your own fish. Uh, rare tameable squirrels and ferrets. These guys are awesome. The, the, the ferret in the game, the best thing in the world. Now we need is a little space monkey named Cornelius and we'll be set. Um, and new rewards for community collections that we talked about, really cool. And then we have rare parrots and ultra rare parrots that are especially huge that you can't get um, you know, very readily. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be red. I'm a red. I'm a red. I like going around and killing people and being mean. This guy, I bet's a red. No? Wow, just a real life. Oh, I love. I love. I love. Me too. Yeah, maybe. We'll talk. We'll talk. We have new areas to acquire quest trees specifically for reds. So that's cool. So the Reds can go in these areas and get quests using the quest system, not have to worry about being ganked by guards and other things. So that's really cool. New race is the slaughter. Uh, bounty quest. So some of the quests are, if you're a human, uh, you may get a quest to go kill some elves and get their ears. So uh, <laughs> return the elf ears for, for good rewards. And there's also a quest for elves, you know, returning human ears because they don't have points, so they're not worth a damn. So then we have new people coming down the stairs. Hi. And uh, that's not part of being red, although they are wearing off shades of red. That's nice. Good timing. Good timing. And uh, we have five, five of the nine new dungeons are mirrored on Feluca, which is a new. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually go, if you play on Feluca, those five dungeons, you can go in on Feluca and play without worrying. It's all good. It's going to be fun. Fantastic. That's like me a marketing guy would say. Fantastic. And then the community collections are also merited uh, to permit red participation, which is really cool because those are really cool aspects of the new expansion, too. And now I'm going to hand it back over to designer what about role B. Huh? What about role playing? Yeah. Pretend role? you're in a medieval fantasy world role playing to the new stuff we've added. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm going to hand it back over to <laughs> Niobe and Shepard where they'll go through a live demo of the game. And uh, what we'll do is we'll hold questions until the end 
uh, just so they can get through the demo. Um, but if you have something you think is earth shattering that you need to ask, that you may. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and you're listening to URadio.com. We've now got Binky here with us, who's going to give us a little interview. Let's hope that this works out fine. The sound seems okay. And I hope that you guys are enjoying everything that we've actually posted so far. I know it's been two and a half hours, but we've got more coming. Keep it going, and this is DJ Alex of UA Radio, one of the three members of staff here, which is Tanya and DJ Puppy. Hope you guys are enjoying your night. First of all, I've got a question for Binky asking how he's found the meet in London. It was great. I mean, everybody here was so friendly. A couple of times they got a little rowdy, and there were some conversations in the back where it made it hard to hear, but all in all, it was a great event. Got some really good feedback, really good insight into the European market. It's just, it was a pleasure being here. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and uh, well, our first question to Binky, of course. We've had a question from our manager and our owner. He's wondering whether you, whether your Renaissance shot, pre UOR shot, is going to be set up in any time in the future, which is going to be run on like without trammel and so on. Is that going to be a possibility? Let's hear what Binky has to say about that. Currently, there are no plans for a pre UOR shard officially. Um, but it's something that we've had discussions about, but right now, there are no plans for it. Yeah, hi Binky. Um, there's been some rumours about the companion program being brought back and legal stuff being looked into. Can you just clarify this and maybe answer any questions that we have? E.g., are they coming back? Do we get our robes back? You know, the kind of stuff. Cheers. That's something that we're working with legal on currently. There are some legal issues um, prohibiting us from having a volunteer or a counselor program. Um, there are a couple of experiments in place, and if those go well, you never know. Hopefully, yes. Hello, this is DJ Tanya with your next question. And your next question is, how do English girls at the UMA compare to your American ones? Well, the English girls are quite lovely. All, all girls are quite lovely, really. But the English girls are quite lovely. The accents, great. And this is one last question from DJ Tanya. Can I please wear your mage robe? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we might be able to work something out there. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and I'm back, and I'm going to be doing the serious questioning, apparently. Um, well, first of all, we've got a couple of questions, and people have asked us about this. The new ru- there are some rumors going around that some of the old rares are being brought back in the same graphics. Can you verify anything on this? We've heard rumors of shackles being brought back, two-story statues, and a couple of other artifacts and rares, which, of course, have been part of the UO community for so many years that they become part of history. Are they going to be recreated as graphics, or are they just going to stay the way that they are? So, bringing back some of the old rares and old items, um, I've heard some talk about it internally, but I don't know what the decision on that was. Um, you know, it, anything's possible, but right now I don't have a definite answer for you. Yeah, hey, this is DJ Puppy again. Um, another question for you, Binky. It's in regards of the tamers and what we like to call twinks. Now, you can go out and buy an advanced character as a tamer, you can get high end tamer jewel and still ride a fire steed. Um, is there going to be some change to this, like, a legendary tame and law without skill jewelry pets at some time, or something? Because, yeah, this is kind of undermining the whole, the whole profession. Uh, as far as the tamers go, um, there's been some discussion about, you know, catering to the tamers a bit and fixing them and addressing some issues. Um, that's a good, good thoughts and, you know, input, and I will address that to the team and bring it up. Right, Binky. Um, another question from one of the EA players standing behind me, Ian. Um, the question is, of course, uh, relating to the new collectibles, as in the museums and so on. This is strictly related to fishing. Um, if you buy a fishing, uh, if you hand in one of the first first level fishing nets, uh, fishing uh, maps thingies, you hand them in, you get uh, 66 points. However, if you sell that to another UO player, you get 1,000 gold. And if you give 1,000 gold in, you get 500 points. So surely this has to be re- re-evaluated or reconsidered because at the moment it's not really worth handing in the map, but rather sell it on to someone else and then give in the gold. Wh- what's your view on this? You know, you bring up some good points there and that's something that I would definitely pass along to the development team to have a look at. Right, we've got another question from another EA player and that's from Ixidor and we're going to hand him over to you right now. Uh, what is about the Charger of the Fallen? 
Right now, the Charger of the Falling is going to act just like an ethereal horse. Um, it'll, it'll have all the same properties. You know, when you get off, it goes in your pack. To get back on it, you double click on the statue and you're back on it. Can't be damaged, never lose loyalty. It'll act just like an ethereal. Right, um, I've got a couple of questions. We're going to start off with the graphics, of course, of UO. The graphics, as we've known, well, there was a 3D client introduced, which some of the new players use. Most of the old players will not convert to it. We don't think, and most people actually agree with me on this, that it's not suitable. It's not viable option compared to the other options that there are in other online games for the 3D view. The Ultima Online 2D view, which everyone's gotten used to, is so much more viable. Is there any chance that it's going to be upgraded to something much more interesting and more fun to look at, possibly? So right now, we don't have any um, announced plans for any sort of upgrades or transformations, but anything's possible, and with UO, everything's possible. I'd just like to take a second to thank everyone from UO Radio for coming to the London Town Hall and for going to be joining us tomorrow at the Berlin Town Hall. Um, UO Radio has been a great support system for Ultima Online, and uh, Viceroy has been great, and thank you for everything you do. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you very much as well, Binky. It has been a pleasure to interview you, and thank you for some very straightforward answers rather than roundabout. Um, we're not going to tell you exactly, but this is what might happen if that happens. Right, so that's excellent. Thank you very much, and we'll now move on to another person. Thank you very much again. Right, and that was Binky from EA, who just gave us a nice interview. We're now going to move on to one of the more famous EU players. He's also become more renowned across shards, actually. This is Hemisphere of the European Shard, one of the biggest collectors of URS in the whole game actually. Possibly the biggest collection which is located just outside Umbra. So if you walk out there you can see a shop and just north of it you will see the museum. There are about eight statues and two lampposts posted right in front of the house. So you can't really miss it but if you tr unless you try really badly. Well the first question that we're going to ask Hemisphere is how did this complete interest in rares begin? Well <laughs> I'm just I guess my first rare was a set of ranger or not a set of ranger, a piece of ranger armor I got with my newbie ticket, obviously. And I sold that for like 3,000 gold, maybe think, hey, I just got this large amount of gold almost for free for doing nothing. So, um, I didn't really think about rares that much after that. But a few years later, played the game a bit, got a bit bored, found Britain Bank, just, I don't know, basically worked out that if, you, if I can buy these cheap, so many people sell them cheap, then I can sell them for more and make a profit. It's pretty simple, a lot of people do it. Well, um, this is DJ Alex again, and thank you for that answer, Hemisphere. Um, we're going to keep asking you a couple of questions on these rares in the Strategics Rares Forum, which has been quite active in the last few months. Surprisingly active due to the event items, of course. Um, what we're going to ask you now is, we know that I personally know you quite well, and I know that you had a fascination with the event items in the beginning. So the old items like the Black Star and so on. Are you still trying to collect these items, or have you moved on and decided that the items that are available on the market at the moment are more than welcome, so encrusted arm guards, all these other items that have come onto the market in recent years. Well, not at all, really. It's not that I don't like to collect the old items, it's just that they never ever come on the market, so um, if I'm going to continue collecting, I have to collect what's available. Right, um, well, your Umbra shop, which is very, very famous, of course, it's possibly the most famous shop in all of Europe, minimum, and possibly one of the most famous shops all across the shops. How many visitors officially have you actually had at the moment? Just give us a rough estimate of what you think it is, and what kind of profit that you generally persecute out of this vendor business every week or every month? You don't have to give us specific details. Give us an overview so we can give our young listeners and our new players or all the players who don't know how to make money an idea of what they could be making if they really tried and put their effort into it. Well, the exact number of visits is about, oh, exact, about, whatever, um, about 445,000, something around that. Um, I don't really measure how much I earn from the shop. I just take it, buy stuff with it. Don't really think about it that much. But I guess on average I can probably make a couple of mil, maybe three or four mil a day, depending on how much on average. Obviously some days I make a lot more, some days I make a lot less. Um Well yeah, so that's about how much you can make if you if you really try. 
Right, well, as we all know, Hemisphere is a huge collector of rares, um, as stated earlier, and he is, well, I'm also a collector, and I'm very, very proud to say that Hemisphere is the biggest one I know, and there is no other museum in any shop that can beat this collection. So, Hemisphere, could you give us a general estimation? I can see your head nodding away numbers right now, and trying to, fuck, 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 I know there's a number somewhere, but give us a general rough estimate, that's all. If you can't give it to us, fair enough. Well, to be honest, I've probably told a few people what I think is the rough value. Um, I guess I've never really said it publicly, but what the hell. I would estimate around 7 to 8 billion, something around that. Um, and yeah, also, uh, in regards to the comment about best collection, etc., I would say that Mandicor of Barger, um, or however you pronounce that, He's pretty, uh, he's pretty good too, I'd say he's on par at least. Right, I have one more question for Hemisphere, and then we're going to move on to another EA representative, more than likely. The question, Hemisphere. Um, we all know you collect, we know that you resell, we know that you make money from all this. Have you ever considered eBaying or considering anything in the real term? That's one part of this question. The second part of this question is, when you were, when you were getting into the rare trade, how, what made you consider it? What, what really, apart from like, you could buy it and resell it, so what would happen if, say one day someone had you and you got absolutely, re absolutely messed up? It could happen to anyone, I'm not saying it will happen to you, <laughs> realistically. But if that happened, would you still continue paying UO? I know 7 to 8 billion UO gold. I know that's an incredible amount, guys, but it's what he's worth, realistically, is an incredible amount of money. Would you still continue working towards getting a new collection, or would you say, this, co this isn't worth it anymore, I've done what I wanted to, and I'm out? Well, oh, as for eBaying, I've definitely, like, been very tempted, it's hard not to be. I've never really gotten into it myself, although a friend of mine has been <laughs> really trying to convince me lately. But really, unless I've got some dire financial situations IRL, I wouldn't do that. Um, in terms of if I was hacked, then yeah, I don't know what I'd do. It's a pretty difficult uh, situation to, um, to picture. If it did happen, I would probably continue playing, but I doubt I would try to rebuild my collection. It would be too much work. Okay, so yeah, um, it'd be nice to do a little outro. So, I'd just say thanks to Alex for the interview, even though he is a bit of a noob. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to your radio for doing this broadcast. Right, um, we've got one or two more interviews lined up. Good work. Um, we've got Naomi lined up. We're going to give one minute and we will get you straight on the air and we'll get an interview with you. I've just got to ask one question to Paralandra. Paralandra is, of course, another EU player. Um, I'm going to focus this on EU because I played myself. And there aren't that many from any other shards because they're all American based or Asia based. Paralandra, we've got two questions for you. One, I know that you used to collect a city, literally, inside Trinsic on Fluka. Right, how much would you estimate that your, tr your city was worth when it was collected and how many houses did it include? And secondly, if you were to move it up, if you, now that you've sold some of it that I'm aware of, how much do you estimate your value to be? Okay, well, uh, at its height, I think there was about 60 houses in it. Um, most of those were quite small houses. There were some small 7 by 7s and other things, but it got up to that sort of number. By the time I finished demolishing them and uh, putting bigger houses up in its place, uh, it had four castles, three... How did you and how did you make the bulk of your money? Okay, okay, okay. I had four castles and about three keeps. Um, the bulk of the money that I made to actually build these in the first place um, was partly in trading, but also PVM. I did an awful lot of PVM to actually get the gold pieces needed to uh, place house spots, and then most of the, hou most of the houses, vast majority of the houses that I got in the city were simply, were simply I dot camping, waiting for the house house to vanish after it decayed and placing on its spot, beating any red teams that were there, beating any red teams that were there who were trying to place in its place. So almost all the 60 houses I got by actually placing on the spots. In terms of the value of the city, um, value of the city I've sold off some of it now, but in total, total value came to about 800 million. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and I'm now here with Naomi, one of the designers, I believe, of UO. What is it specifically you do? Designer for UO, as I said. And we've got one of our other DJs, DJ Tanya, standing across, taking pictures. 
Um, and she's gone completely loony. Maybe it's all the alcohol. Who knows? Well, Naomi, we've got a couple of questions for you, of course, as we did with the Binky a couple of minutes ago. Well, our first question is directed, completely related to the graphics that you are a designer for UO team. Rumour has it that there are new graphics coming in of the old items. So we've got rumours going around that two-story statues are going to come out again, that the shackles which people hang in are also going to come out. Is there any verification on this, or is it just a general idea which people have spread as a rumour? We have a lot of new graphics coming in the game um, that our art team has designed. Some of the original items, I know originally people thought that people already have. Right, this is DJ Alex, and we're still with Naomi, of course, one of the designers, and thank you very much for that answer. Well, uh, another question that we did actually ask uh, Pinky as well, it's related to the UO Charger. We know that the graphics is going to be like the ethereal horse in the statue in the backpack, but how much is it going to be alike, and is it going to add any resists or any extra bonus to the player? The Charger of the Fallen, which is uh, a pre-sale item for UO Mundane's Legacy, will act like an Ethi horse. That is, you will be able to mount it and you'll have a statue that, that when you dismount it will go in your pack. It will not, like a Swamp Dragon, it will not add any resist to you. It will not add any extra features or any properties to you. Right, and as I just said, I'm just going to focus on graphics with the Naomi because she is a designer, as said, and she is one of the people who will really be designing our new items, our old items, making sure that everything looks really cool. So, well, we all remember the fiasco that was UXO a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago or so. Is there any plans to bring back maybe some of that graphics, which look somewhat like the World of Warcraft engine? Is there any plans for that, maybe to come into the real UO world rather than make a new game? Or maybe make a new game, but make it transferable into a new UO world? That's, of course, is a key issue for many players, because they don't really want to move from their 2D client, but if they are offered something like World of Warcraft, of course, anyone will consider it. Unfortunately, I don't have a very good answer for that. Um, I don't know exactly um, what our plans for the future as far as the client. I don't know if what our plans, what the future might be for things, or what may or may not be pulled in from older games. So I don't have I don't have much of an answer for you. Right. Well, I've just been told we can do endless question, guys. So uh, we could be here a long time with Naomi. I actually feel sorry for her because she's been here for hours already and talking all evening. You're going to hear her voice for like two hours before this. Um, well, another question, of course. Well, since you're not too certain of if that's going to happen, it's, of course, an estimation, possibility. It might never happen. Of course, it might never. Another question. We, we all loved, or quite a few people loved the upgrade that you did to the little mini-map where the trees became visible and houses became more viewable to place. Is there any possibility of a future upgrade to the graphics of the 2D client and possibly the 3D client, which a lot of people are really annoyed with, at least a lot of the old players, which I put myself in that category. We, we will try to adapt to it, but there is no adapting. Is there any uh, idea for an upgrade to the 2D client, or possibly maybe a downgrading of the 3D client, by combining the two in order to make it more suitable for players to run around with the big bags, which was a very good feature of 3D, and possibly in integrating that into the 2D area. So you may also want to talk to Shepard about this a little bit, because he'll be down after I speak with you. Um, all I can tell you right now is I can't tell you what's coming, but I can tell you that the team is very committed to improving the game as it stands now for veteran players, and work with the people that are here and have been supporting the game for years and try and make it a best situation for them. And that may involve some of the things that you were talking about. It may involve some different things, but the team is really looking forward to getting back to UO and focusing on the core gameplay. Right, there's going to be a bit of a commotion in the background, but hey, that's natural. We're at a UO meet. People are going to talk, they're going to laugh, they're going to drink, they're going to smoke, they're going to do whatever they want for a couple of hours with the EA people that they all love and they all work with and they all pay. <laughs> That's what we do in effect, isn't it, really? Uh, oh, well, apparently they look out for us as well. Right. Now we know that. That's a fact. Um, we've got another couple of questions, of course. There's one question relating... Well, you did say that there were some ideas for it, and that is excellent news for some upgrades to us. Another question about the graphics is, is there going to be any new graphics introduced, apart from the new monsters and new dungeons which are coming in? Are there any further plans or any idea when the next expansion after Mundane's Legacy is going to come out? And is there any theory or basis or any rumours that you could possibly start or begin considering now already? Or is that a complete impossibility as so far, since the new one still hasn't come out? 
So I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen in the future because that changes over time. And there's lots of plans that we have to work through. Um, but I can tell you that we we have a full team of artists, a very good, very dedicated artists on our team. And they've done a lot with introducing things over time where for years we were not able to introduce new art into UO. And what that will be in the future, we, we only know. But they have been continuing to add new art either through promotional items like the Evil Decor or through expansions and whatnot. So I, I think they'll continue that over time. Right, and the reason, thank you for that question, answer of course, and that's excellent news. I'm sure lots of people will be interested to hear that. Well, the question here now, we're going to talk about the new token system, which a lot of people have actually quite approved of, because it means instead of buying codes on the different charts, which might or might not work, they can buy a token which definitely works, and there is no problem with it, and they can use it as they see fit. Is there any consideration for possibly moving that on towards the six character transfers, uh, six character, character slot characters? Something like that. And also the game time codes, possibly, for a 30 day, 90 day, and 180 day. So that players and UO brokers, because they are there and they are selling money and so on, which isn't a secret to anyone. Is there a possibility that this is going to be introduced to secure security for the players, that these codes are verified by EA and that they will be checked? That's actually a really interesting concept concept that you were just talking about. I don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you that the promotional tokens have been working very well, and we're going to be using that for the our pre-order item, and what happens in the future is I suspect that we will be using it for other things in the future. Well, that's really the end of the interview with Naomi, and we'd like to thank her very much on behalf of the UA Radio, and of course of our listeners and the EA staff, who have been very, very helpful to us all day, and have actually invited us along to do this interview, and not actually told us to go away and do something else today. So this is excellent. Thank you very much for the interview. And I will give you over to Naomi to say a few goodbye words. I'd like to thank UO Radio for coming out here and supporting us today and everybody that's come out to the Audley House in London. And thank you everyone in London for having us and we'll see you in Berlin. Right, we've now got another member of the EA staff here. This is our last interview of the evening. I'd like to welcome Rob, or Robert, to our show, and he's going to be answering a couple of questions. He's the lead engineer of uh, UO, and that is excellent news. So we're going to start off by, answering, by asking a couple of questions we've done already, of course. First of all, we've asked uh, both Pinky and now we've asked Naomi about it. The graphics for uh, the new ML. Is there going to be any upgrades, either now or possibly in the future, for the 2D version of UO? So as far as uh, graphical upgrades go, um, are you asking specifically for the art itself or the graphics engine? Graphics engine. Uh, I can't talk about that, but there's some. We, we certainly uh, are looking into that kind of stuff right now. It's uh, we recognize that it's an, an old, uh, old client, it's old technology, and uh, needs to have some upgrades. So we're looking into it. Right, so we definitely have a bit of a confirmation that there is a consideration for possibly expanding the graphics along. The graphic engine might just be improved. We don't know. We'll see in the future, of course. That's excellent news. Another question we've asked everyone else is the old UO rares, which is a part of the history of Ultima Online, of course. We've been, there are rumors circulating around in the rares community, which is quite big these days, unfortunately, that there are going to be some of the old rares, like shackles and some other items brought back into the game. It has newly named items and the old ones will retain their old ones. Is there, any, is there any resemblance of truth in this? Or is it just rumor that's spread by the rare collectors to put up the price or put down the price in certain items? Well, I'd have to defer to uh, Niobe on that, being that uh, she's the designer. However, uh, as far as I know, they're just rumors. Right, this is DJ Alex again of UAradio.com. We're still here with the uh, lead engineer, Rob, and uh, we're going to keep asking a few more questions from him. I'm just trying to think here, which is why I'm talking lots about nothing. Um, another question that we've also asked the other people is about the charger, of course. Rumor has it that it's just going to be like an Aperol that anyone can ride. And doesn't that, in some sense, really ruin the theory, which a lot of people have voiced on UO Hall and on different shard forums, that what's the point of becoming a third-year vet if you can just get a horse no matter what age you are? A lot of people have been looking forward to becoming that third-year vet, and they've been like praying for it to actually happen. But now there's going to be a bunch of new codes and a bunch of new like charges which anyone can ride no matter what happens. What's your view on this, or is there any... What, what's going to happen with these items? Well, this might be broken. Well, as far as uh, 
the three-year vet reward versus the charge for the felon. Um, I think that's a, that's a valid point to consider, and we should uh, certainly take a look at what we can do to separate the, uh, the charger from falling from the free reward, like, like you're mentioning. Here. I think it's probably a good idea to keep those separate, but again, this falls pretty squarely in the uh, design court, and uh, from what I specifically do is uh, code related. Right, and um, we have one tiny correction. Rob isn't actually the lead engineer of Ultima Online. He's the lead engineer of the Mundane Legacy. Uh, a guy called Evil Mantis is in charge of the live team, and that is a slight error by me. I'm totally sorry about that, but thanks for correcting me, Rob. That is excellent to know, and we know who to direct everyone's our problems to. It's to Mantis. Right, um, in relation to Mundane's Legacy, which you are in charge of, of course, how many towns are we going to look at, and the new spell system and spell weaving and so on? Are they going to introduce a huge amount of change in the Ultima community, or is it going to be like with AOS, when ninjas came in, half the community go, we'll have a ninja, and then it just dies out, because it's not that much fun anyway. We know that you've introduced a group system, a lot akin to the World of Warcraft engine, where some things had to be done in a group, and other things cannot be done in a group. That seems to be the general response from this. Is that what you're trying to aim at? You're trying to go gear more towards the kind of... Uh, well, World of Warcraft is literally a more successful at the moment in memory-wise. Is that what you're trying to gear at and try to draw in more players in order to introduce quest systems and sort of stuff like that? That's understandable, but is that the main aim of this system? So in general, uh, uh, so spell weaving is a, is a skill, of course, and so it's not actually a profession. Um, and although it is more powerful with a group, you can still play, uh, have this building skill and uh, use it without a group. Um, as far as trying to drive uh, more people into being group oriented, I, I personally uh, think it's a massive multiplayer. I mean, the multiplayer aspect is really to focus on. And I personally think that uh, grouping is a, is a positive thing. That's why you want to interact with other players. But um, I don't think we're specifically shooting for that. Right, well, we asked this question to Binky, of course, and that is related to the companion system, where the old companions, some of them are still walking around, they still have the same powers that they used to have, but they actually don't have, like, access to be removed, they don't have access to do anything. Rumor has it that a new system might be introduced based on legal circumstances, of course, and if that comes through, are the old companions going to be allowed to go straight back into the new system if they are actively playing and helping out young players? Or is there going to be a question about them and they have to reapply and try to get into it and if they fail, just lose out on their companion status? Or even if they do fail, will their current companion status stay? Well, unfortunately, the, uh, this would be best suited for uh, like from the GM's Platinum, specifically. Um, I don't really sure what the process is as far as uh, bringing companions back, uh, any of that stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm probably better off just saying, mm, I don't know. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and we'd like to thank Rob for joining us, and to say thank you very much for joining us as well. It's been an excellent interview. We'd like to thank him as being our last interviewee, and we hope that he's going to continue to join up with the UO team, and we hope him further success with the Mundane Legacy and any other project that he does undertake. Um, of course, keep us posted on the UO forums and so on, on any upgrades or any possible changes that might happen. And I think just about every UO community member will be more than happy to talk to you or contact you if anything does go wrong. I'm going to give you over to Rob now to make an outro and say goodbye to you guys and maybe give an information or two and something he'd like to add to. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I certainly appreciate everything you guys are doing. I think this is uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, UO Radio and the, uh, the service that you provide. Um, and yeah, absolutely. If there's more, uh, more stuff, more questions, ask away. If, uh, if not now, then uh, send us email or, or uh, we'll try to read the forums as much as possible. So any place you can find a venue. Hey, this is DJ Alex, and you're listening to UAradio.com. This is probably going to be one of my very, very few appearances live on air. Or not live, I suppose. It's being broadcast later on tonight. But I would like to say thank you very much to the EA staff, the EA players, the Ultima small online players. Thank you very much, everyone, for showing up. We've had a room stuffed full of people. They've been drinking, they've been jolly, they've been fun, they've had food, and they've asked some very, very serious questions, which, of course, you will have heard by now which has all been recorded. It's all going to be broadcast directly to you guys. Um, I'd like to sign off now and say thank you again to the EA staff who come to England, and I hope the Berlin meet tomorrow goes exquisitely well. Thank you very much, and this is DJ Alex signing off. And I would also like to say thank you on behalf of DJ Puppy and DJ Tanya.